just over a year ago, I moved on to the Case K9 Wolverine system holder. But in moving on to this system from my Lee system, I didn't want to have to replace all of my existing filters. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I moved on to the Case system, my thoughts on the system in general, and how it compares to the Lees, together with how effective it is to use Lee filters in conjunction with the Case system. So stick around. Now then, good to be with you all again. And first and foremost, I just want to say that I have no affiliation with case filters, nor even Lee filters for that matter. I'm not a brand ambassador, nor a reseller of any kit. And that all the kit I'm going to be talking about today, I bought myself. So, just over a year ago, prior to all of the COVID problems that then descended upon the world, I broke my Lee polarizer filter. It fell to the ground and shattered. And whilst you can get by without any other filters, and indeed many shun filters altogether, a polarizer is an extremely useful tool for any landscape photographer to have. And so I started looking for a replacement. Now, obviously you can just use a simple screw on polarizer if that's all you need. But I also use ND filters and sometimes grad filters. And for such, I've been a long time user of Lee filters. And like many other photographers, I moved on to them because, well, at the time, they were the system many aspired to. They have a good reputation, they're well built and fairly robust, but they're by no means perfect. Lee recently updated their holder, which addresses some of the issues that I've experienced. And so in seeking to replace my polarizer, I had the opportunity to consider these. Like many others, the Lee system uses a filter holder with a number of slots into which you can slide in either square or rectangular filters. And they make holders for different size filter systems. Personally, I use the 100mm filters. The holder itself then attaches to the lens by means of an adapter ring, which are available in sizes to fit most lenses. One of the main issues though with their original holder is that it had no means to lock it onto the adapter ring. And there have been many reports of photographers finding the holder becoming detached from the camera when they've pointed the camera to the ground due to the weight of the various filters that they had in the holder at the time. And this problem is probably due to the latch, which has a chamfered edge that faces away from the camera. And any pressure on the chamfered side causes it to retract, therefore making the adapter susceptible to coming off. Unfortunately, turning the latch to fit the other way around makes it even less secure, as the latch then doesn't gain enough bite into the adapter ring. So ideally, I wanted a system that would lock securely. Another issue with the Lee system is that the polarizer filter attaches to the very front of the holder, which in itself causes a couple of issues. First, if you're not using any other filters in the holder, you have a big gap between the front element of the lens and the polarizer which means that light can potentially come in from the open edges of the holder and be reflected back off the filter into the camera. It also means that you still need to use the big holder even if you only want to use the polarizer on its own, which doesn't really make it suitable for walkabout use as it's not that discreet. Another problem I had was that with the polarizer attaching to the main holder via a metal adapter ring, which is bought separately, in cold conditions, I often found that it had more or less become welded to the metal rim of the filter and was near impossible to remove. The thinness of the wide angle polarizer I had meant that you couldn't gain enough purchase on it in order to turn it. I often had to leave it on until I got home and let the metal warm up in order that I could then release it. Now, as I said earlier, some of these issues have been resolved by Lee with their latest system holder. There's now a locking mechanism and the polarizer no longer requires an additional adapter. It just clips onto the main holder, but it still fastens to the very front of the holder. Unfortunately though, the older polarizer, which is still available, isn't compatible with the new holder. So when I broke my old Lee polarizer, I had three choices. Either just buy the same Lee polarizer and use it on the existing holder, or move onto the newer Lee filter holder and buy the new polarizer as well, or buy into a completely new system, which of course, as you already know, is what I did. And what attracted me to the Case K9 system 
was that the polarizer came included with the holder. And so it worked out a lot cheaper, especially as I also wanted to get a reverse grad filter at the same time. And with the case system, the polarizer attaches directly to the lens adapter ring itself, rather than fixing to the extreme front. And it attaches magnetically, so no seizing up in cold weather. And the magnet does a great job of keeping the filter in place, so much so that at times you need quite a bit of effort to prise it off. The benefits of attaching directly to the lens adapter ring is that as well as not needing another adapter, you can use the polarizer on its own without the need to attach the full holder, making it more discreet. Also, with having the polarizer closer to the lens, there's less chance of vignetting with wide angle lenses. And unlike when using my 16 to 35 on my EOS R at 16 mil with the Lee, I haven't seen any issues when using it with the K system, even with the full holder on. Unfortunately, the case adapter rings, unlike Lee's, are only available in a limited number of sizes, such as 72, 77 and 82 mm, as well as for some specialist lenses like the Olympus 7 14 lens. And so step up rings are needed for lenses that aren't specifically covered. Now, of course, case make and sell these, but any make of step up ring will do. However, I'd much prefer not having to use step up rings, as sometimes you have to use two or three together in order to meet the variance required. And then you might find that you need to remove one of the step up rings in order to fit the adapter onto a different lens, and it can all become a bit faffy. The Lee system is far more flexible and simpler in this area, and as I said before, provide adapter rings for a wide assortment of lenses. Now, as for the case holder itself, it isn't as chunky as the Lee holder, which means it takes up less room in the bag, but it doesn't feel as robust as the Lee's, even though it's made of metal and the Lee's is plastic. The brass fixing on the Lee's just makes it feel a little bit more refined. With both systems, you can mix a number of filters together, and both holders have different fixings to allow you to attach a number of slots to the holder. But with the Lee, there are fixings which allow you to attach either one, two or three slots. But with the case, you're more restricted. You're stuck with either two or three slots, as there aren't any screws that are short enough to accommodate a single slot on its own. To attach the case holder to its adapter ring, the adapter fits just under these short protrusions. And then using the thumb screw, you tighten the locking mechanism, which makes for a very secure fit. Though personally, I find the Lee an easier holder to attach. I sometimes have problems getting the case adapter correctly seated under the protrusions, and so when I tighten the thumb screw, I often find that the adapter isn't actually secured. Now, with the polarizer sitting on the adapter ring itself, there's a tooth or geared rim on the side which interconnects with the geared wheel on the adapter once it's in place. And with the polarizer in place, it means as you rotate the wheel, the polarizer rotates. This is quite neat, but it's also slower than just physically turning the polarizer yourself. It also means it's harder to judge how far you've turned the polarizer. Obviously, as you turn a polarizer, its effect will alter, but often it can be difficult to see this effect in the screen. And you therefore need to know when you've actually turned the filter sufficient for any effect to have had an impact. With the Lee, I can keep my finger on the filter as I turn it so I can easily tell how far I've gone around. However, with the case system, you can't see how far you've actually turned the filter. You can only go by what you visually see in the screen. And as I said before, this sometimes can be a bit difficult to spot. I therefore find myself turning and turning the wheel over and over again so that I end up going over the same old ground. When using the polarizer without the main holder, then things are a lot simpler. You operate the rotation just as you would with the Lee. Now, as I said during the opening sequence, I didn't really want to just get rid of all my other Lee filters. I've built up a reasonable collection over the years and have a number of graduated and solid neutral density filters, such as the big and little stoppers. And it will be quite expensive to replace these. And for the most part, they do me just fine. Though again, they're not perfect. The graduated filters I have are made of resin material, which whilst making them lighter and robust, can make them prone to scratches, which under certain conditions can potentially cause image problems. The company do now produce glass filters, 
but these are somewhat expensive. Also, the ND Big Stopper and Little Stoppers have a slight colour cast, but this can usually be corrected in post-production. A number of reviewers in comparing the results of the Case and Lee ND filters have generally found the Case the more pleasing. And I have to say that the reverse grad I bought has yielded very pleasing results without any hint of a colour cast. It's made of glass, which makes it heavier, but also less prone to scratching, though potentially less durable. And as with my Lee polarizer, there's every chance it will break if dropped onto a hard surface. And recently, I did just that. I accidentally dropped my new case reverse grad about three to four foot onto rocks. I feared the worst, but on close inspection, the filter was just fine. No scratches, no chips or anything. And so I was highly impressed. The glass is nano coated, which supposedly makes it easier to clean without leaving smears. It also reduces glare and helps with the scratch prevention. And I must say that I certainly haven't experienced any issues so far. Now, to be able to use both makes of filters within the same holder requires them to be of a similar, if not the same size. And both holder systems are designed for two millimeter thick filters. Though the case also provides optional slots or rails to accommodate thinner 1.2 millimeter filters. However, when using the case filter within the Lee holder, it doesn't seem very secure and can slip down over time. As seen here, shaking the holder does cause the case filter to drop out eventually. Conversely, the Lee filters need quite a bit of pushing to get them into the case holder and seem to put a bit of stress onto the case holder. And I've already lost one screw as a result of it working loose. But even Casey's own filters are not that easy to slide in and out of the slots and are quite a tight fit and also seem to put stress on the fixings of the holder and are certainly not as smooth as the Lee filters are within their own system. And this is partly due to the rigidity of the slots. As you can see here, the slots in the Lee system have a good deal of flex, whereas those in the case are far more rigid. Several times I found the camera move on the tripod whilst trying to slide in the filters. I now find it a lot easier to remove the holder and then slide in the filters and then reattach it. But due to the tight fit of the filters, it's important to keep checking the screws to ensure that they're secure. Talking of which, the screws on the case holder are tightened by a very small Allen key rather than a standard screwdriver as Lee uses. Now, even though I can use my Lee filters in the case holder, occasionally I find that when sliding a filter in, it'll catch on this part of the slot, which sticks out. If it does, you just need to press the filter in a little and continues to slide it in. One thing to be aware of is that Lee's ND filters, such as the Big Stopper and Little Stoppers, have a gasket on the reverse to help eradicate unwanted light when placed into the Lee holder but the case holder already has some felt on it for such purposes. And so in order to use such Lee filters in the case holder, you need to turn them around so that the gasket is facing away from the lens. Another issue in using the square Lee filters in the case holder is that with the slots on the case being longer, when the Lee square filters are in place, there isn't much of an edge of the filter left in order to grab hold of, in order to remove it. Instead, you just need to push the filter either from the top or from the bottom. Now, if you're using Casey's own filters, this isn't a problem as their ND filters are the same size as the grad filters. They're rectangular and not square. Whilst this makes it easier to grab hold of, it does mean that you have a lot of unnecessary glass, which results in unnecessary weight and potentially extra costs. A solid ND filter doesn't need to be rectangular. You don't need to move the filter up and down to get it in the right spot. It only needs to cover the lens. So I'm not quite sure why Case use rectangular filters for these. So what are my overall thoughts then on the Case system? Well, the filters themselves are well constructed and being of glass appear to have good image properties. But of course, they're heavier than the Lee standard filters. The holder is more compact than the original Lee system and with the ability to attach the polarizer directly to the lens adapter, it makes it more flexible and less cumbersome. The case system also offers very good value for money. But I don't think the slotting mechanisms of the filters is as smooth and as refined as the Lees. I fear, despite checking the screws regularly, 
that I'll probably end up losing more screws over time due to the stress that even Casey's own filters seem to exhibit onto the holder slots. I'm also concerned that the screw threads themselves might even become worn over time due to the extra stress. Also, I'd like to see a wider selection of adapter rings rather than having to rely on step-up rings. But certainly as a cost-effective filter system that can also accommodate the Lee filters with care, they are certainly worth a look. Well, I hope that's been of use to some of you. If you have any points or questions, then please feel free to leave a comment below. Until next time then, thank you ever so much for watching. Take care, stay safe. TTFN, ta-ta for now. Yeah.